Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. I have another tote bag for you today. This is the Alexandra tote, and it's uh, we made it using the June Taylor pre-printed quilt as you go batting. This was a fun project. We chose the Farm Girl Vintage by Lori Holt for Riley Blake. I love this collection. As you can see, the slice rug back here, another wonderful, fun project. We made the tote out of it. And after we made the tote, we had strips left over. We made these patchwork pouches. My wonder clips are in here. My other notions are in here. We could have made many bags with our leftover strips. In the kit, if you want to be getting uh, the kit to make this exact bag, you'll of course be getting your batting, your lining fabric, and the two and a half inch strip roll. And again, you'll have plenty left over to make other projects like the patchwork pouch, or maybe some other projects that you've been wanting to make with two and a half inch strips. So let me put that aside. Let's just look first at the pre-printed batting. You might not be familiar with June Taylor's uh, products, but they do all kinds of pre-printed batting, not just for totes. This is their, one of their newest ones, but they've done table runners, placemats, even pet kind of placemats for your dog and your cat. They're always uh, coming out with new ones. They have stockings and more. So let's just take a look at this. The numbers are really where we'll be placing our strips. And what I love about using their product is I don't have to quilt a project later. I get to quilt it as I go. Now, uh, I went ahead and cut out, this is the main portion of the bag itself, and then the handles are, the straps of the, the strap handles are just a separate piece. I went ahead and cut apart. There's another little bit of uh, cotton, it's kind of a cotton webbing that's part of the strapping, but we'll go over that just a little bit later. When you cut this out, first off, they say to not iron it. And when you first take it out of the package, there's gonna be some wrinkles. Don't worry about that. Go ahead and just smooth everything out and you'll cut a half inch to one inch outside of the drawn line. Now that's all included on the instructions that are inside your batting. So you don't need to worry about that. I'm just kind of reiterating all the instructions that are already included with your backing, or with your batting, excuse me. Now what you'll want to do, your lining fabric, which we chose this for the lining, you'll use the basting spray. On the back side of this, this is just, this is just a, a batting. You want to spray that, and then you'll put your batting on the back and smooth everything out. Again, starting in the middle and smooth everything out. Now I want, I don't know if the overhead camera can pick it up, but we went ahead and you can sew either just inside the line or on the line, all the way around. And this not only attaches firmly the top to what is the lining, but later on you'll see it's kind of our cut line. So let's jump into the project and you'll see what I mean with what's a cut line, what's all of that. Let's just get going. Now included in the instructions, they'll tell you what size to cut each strip. Notice how this is strip number one, this is two and three, four and five. You always work in these kind of opposites. So strip number one, they had us in our instructions, they had us cut all of the strips in this, in this main section to I believe 14 inches. So you can just lay your strips out and I encourage you to just lay those strips out. You might even wanna just uh, kind of lay strips out in their full width of fabric initially and kind of fiddle around with the arrangement you want. And then once you know when, what, where you want each piece to go, that's when you'll be referring to the instructions and they'll be telling you what size, what length to cut each strip. Like here, pieces one through nine are cut to 14 inches. Pieces 10 and 11 are cut to 13 inches. This will guide you into what length to cut each of your strips. So let's put that aside. I've cut that these two 14 inches. Strip one is just going to lay straight down. And of course, I want that to be so that I'm just inside this line or right at that line and right at that line. Make sure that you're not infringing on this lane in short of this lane or it won't work out. So you wanna make sure that your strips, you do cut your strips to the precise measurements they say and that you're right in that lane. Piece one is just going to stay there. Piece number two, if I want piece number two to be here, I will go right sides together 
And I'm just going to put a pin in here and here and here. And we're just going to sew a standard quarter inch seam allowance. And we'll sew those two strips together. Let me just put that pin there. So we'll be heading over to the sewing machine. I have a 97D. I'm sewing under Bernina 770 Quilters Edition. I have a standard 8012 needle. And I think I'm sewing with some confetti cotton in my white. Could be a neutral of any kind. So we'll just be sewing a standard quarter inch seam allowance. We're starting here, and I do want to end my strip right at the end. I'm not going to go into the next lane. So let's take that to the sewing machine right now. So our natural instinct when we sewn any seam is to go press. Again, they do recommend in the pattern because the batting, especially if you're kind of heating it, stretching it, can, can even shrink it. What they recommend is, is a finger pressing. Now, I like things to be really pressed. This is the, this is the clover roll and press, and I, I love that, you know, it's, it's kind of a nice alternative when you are supposed to be finger pressing. It gives me just a little bit more of a press, so I feel super confident about that edge being nice and pressed. Um, one of the things you might want to consider actually with your strips now that I'm at this stage, it reminds me, you might want to add either some starch or some sizing to your strips before you cut them. It also makes this step, when you do the roll and press, it's more likely to hold its, uh, I guess I would call it crease, its, its fold. So that's another thing to consider. So we've done that one. Remember how we said this is one, two, and three, and four, and five, and we kind of flip flop. So same, if this is where you want number three to be, you would go right sides together, sew your quarter inch, and again, you're gonna finger press to the outside or use your roll and press, and you will con continue with four and five and six and seven all the way until that's completed. Now we've done that ahead of time. Let me bring that out. I want to show that to you. So let's have a look. Look at that. So we not only finished that, but then we start going in this direction. Let me show you what we did here. Notice how all the strips, we were very careful to make sure, you see that blue line? I'm not sure if the overhead can see that. That we can definitely see that blue line and this is where the next strips come into play. Now we did that side ahead of time, but let me show you here. And again, you'll want to make sure that you are um, checking the measurements on your pattern so that you're cutting the strips to, eat to the proper length. So our goal here is to make sure, you don't want to have your strip down here, right? You want to make sure that when you, I always check it with it fully laid out, that I'm fully covering these boxes right here. Let me get my head out of the way. I want to make sure my strip is fully covering that. So don't just lay that down and think you've got it. Check it, adjust it. When you're sure that you have that, that's when you can go ahead and go right sides together. Again, pinning, and then take it to the sewing machine and sew your quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do that off camera. When I come back, I'll have all of these strips sewn down and we'll take it to the next step. So all of my strips now are sewn onto the batting and now it's time for us to go ahead and we'll cut out what I would call the footprint and you can see that here on the diagram. That's why we stitched that line on before so that we could see where we would go ahead and cut. As you can imagine, if you're on the front side, trying to, let's just go back to the front, you kind of have to peek and have to, you know, try to put your ruler down and are you where you should be. So this, this just makes it a lot easier to see where to cut. And I'm going to cut just, just on that line or just slightly after. 
And I'm just gonna cut straight up right now, but I wanna make sure that my flaps, boy, I've done this before where a fabric kinda got tucked under and I trimmed it and I ruined it. So do make sure that your pieces are all out where they need to be. Now, if you feel more comfortable pressing everything at that point before you're cutting it, do it. Because at least the whole thing, if it's gonna shrink a little bit, it's gonna all shrink together. So go ahead and make every, sure everything is smooth. And I'm gonna make that first cut. And there is a notch down here, but I'm gonna cut that actually a little bit later. I'm just gonna keep that straight line going. I think I might rule their move just a breath. So I'm gonna go back. That's where that uh, grip tape would be super handy. Cut this one. And again along here. And then one final side and then we'll go back and get those notches and that of course will be so that we can box our corners make sure that's all smooth yep it is okay so let's let's make that go away okay so we mentioned that there's these notches right here Yes, you know, you could get in there probably with a rotary cutter, but I'm a little concerned about going too deep. So that's why I love to use my Kai scissors. They are so sharp, and going through this batting is just a non-issue for the Kai's. Okay, and then over here. Now, once we sew the sides together and the uh, box our corners, we'll be using a half inch seam allowance. So we're done using our quarter inch seam allowance for now, and we'll be going over to use a half inch seam allowance. And the instructions do mention that, so you don't need to to worry about writing that down. That would be included in the instructions inside your batting. So this is what it looks like now. We'll go ahead and go right sides together. Now these pieces in the corner are loose, right? So let's just make sure that when we do pin our sides that they don't roll back on us and potentially get tucked in like that. You wanna make sure your pieces are out all the way Just a couple pins, and we'll go sew our half inch seam allowance on both sides. In fact, I'll do that off camera just to save us some time. There's nothing, nothing different than you would expect. Just a half inch here, a half inch here. But I do want to go over boxing the corners with you. So when I come back, I'll have those sewn, and we'll box the corners together. So my side seams are sewn together, and because of the way June Taylor has you do that notch, the box corners are a piece of cake. So even if you're not familiar with them, you'll see how easy this is. Now, to do the box corner, I'm just going to lay that open like that. That's all I'm gonna do, did you see that? So the, it's laying like this. I just lift up this corner. I can either press this open with my fingers or you could literally take that to your pressing mat and press that seam open but you do want that seam open. There's a lot of bulk going on here, of course. I'll just go ahead and press that one. And that just makes it so when I, when I lift that like that, that's just laying open. So we'll sew a half inch seam. I'm gonna pin that. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna pin the other side and we'll just sew them both. Now consequently, you will have these open seams on the interior of your bag. You could either maybe pink those with some pinking shirts, which help reduce fraying. 
So that's one option. And if you have other options that you like to use for finishing raw seams, that's a great time to go ahead and, and do that. So same thing. This time I'll just finger press that just to save us a little bit of time. But I would go ahead and press that seam open. And I just kind of look, do I have the same distance from this center seam to the sides? And I do. And let's go ahead and pin that. Let's run over to the sewing machine. We have a half inch seam allowance planned. And let's box those corners. I am going to reverse. I want to reinforce this. This is the bottom of my bag. Let's take out that pin. Okay, let's go do that other side while we're here. I always want to make sure your bag is good and flattened out for you when you're doing any kind of box corners on any project. So now we get to turn our bag right side out. We'll just make sure everything is good. Everything's what we're expecting to see. And you can see how fast this bag comes together. First time we made it, I believe it was like three hours. The second time we made it was only two hours. So how fun to be able to do a project like this in just a couple hours. So that's your bag so far. Now we'll go ahead and add the, uh, what would be considered kind of the binding, I, I guess you would call it. Um, so we took two of our strips, and I think we were able to actually do it in one. The pattern does say that it could require two strips, but if you don't have any waste, you can usually do that with just one strip. But we did go ahead and piece two, just, just because, um, as you would expect, you are just going to uh, iron that with wrong sides together. And I'm just going to start anywhere on my bag that's really not on a side seam. And I'm going to leave a nice open, say, 8-inch tail where I just start. I better turn that around. <laughs> I'll start here. And I'm going to leave at least an 8-inch tail to start. If you have a machine where you can take off the kind of the plate, uh, this would be a good time to go ahead and do that because then the bag can kind of just fit around kind of the arm of your sewing machine. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to start sewing a standard quarter inch seam allowance. We're back to the quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And I'm going to stop well before out here. And I'm going to show you a really cool way to finish your binding on this bag. So I've got this binding is on, but there's this big gap. So what do we do with this big gap? I've got, I've got a lot of extra fabric here. We do know that this is going to eventually, of course, close here. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit of this fabric so there's less to maneuver with. Let me put that aside. Now notice there's the gap. Here's where we stopped or started sewing. So about halfway there, I'm going to have my binding beginning and end meet about in the middle of that gap. I'm just going to lay the strips back on top of themselves and they butt right up to each other. And we're going to press. We want a good firm press because we need to see that crease for this, this binding technique to work out. So I want to show that to you. So you can see that's a nice firm crease right there. Notice the creases on the outside and the creases on the inside. I'm going to actually fold that back. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to press that one more time so my crease is all to the outside. So I can definitely see it. Let's check this one. 
again, my crease is here and one is kind of tucked under. I really want them both on the outside. So I'm just going to again press like this. I just want to sew those together so that I have continuous binding. You see that? So we're just going to bring them together and where that, that crease is, we will put, I'm just going to put a pin right down there and down at the, at the end as well. It's such a cool way to end a binding. Let's just take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew directly on that line. Now if you need to pin additionally, maybe off to the side so, you, so it's out of the way but you feel that nothing is going to be moving. That I always encourage pinning, absolutely. So let's take that to the sewing machine and we're going to sew that. And I'm just checking as I go to make sure those creases are right over top of each other. I didn't take any tucks. Before I cut anything, I want to double check, did that work? I just kind of lay that back. Is that going to work? Yes. So at this point, you can just visually cut kind of that visual quarter of an inch. And let's press that open. There we go. And then we'll press in half. And let's take that back to the sewing machine and we'll continue sewing our binding. Okay, isn't that a cool way to do binding? And you can certainly do that on quilts, of course. Now, in one of my bags here, I've got my Wonder Clips. So let's open that up. These bags are so cute. They hold so much. Now, with our Wonder Clips, just like you would do with a quilt, you'll just roll that over and clip. Put the flat side to, let's see, what will we be? We, want, we will be clipping and stitching from this side. So we want that flat side, there's the profile of that Wonder Clip. You want the flat side on the bottom. And we'll clip all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and change out my thread to be green. Once I have everything clipped, I'll change out my thread to be green. And I'm just going to stitch right in that ditch. And it's just going to catch that on the back. So you want to make sure you're folding nice and tight over that edge so you make sure that your top stitch in the ditch here does catch that in the back. You can, of course, do that by hand if you're uncomfortable doing this by machine. But we're going to go ahead. I'm going to be using this tote. I know I'm going to be washing this tote. I feel comfortable uh, that I can get right in that ditch and catch the backing. So when I come back, that'll be all done and then we'll move on to how to make the straps. Now that our bag has its binding, we're going to make the straps. Now the straps are really unique on this bag. I have one made ahead of time so I can show you what they look like. This is the back of the strap and this is the front. It's really a really cool assembly. So we decided for our bag that we wanted the front and the back, this strap and the one back here to match. You can make them scrappy, of course. So if you are going to have it such that they'll be the same, you'll want to get two strips, two and a half inches for the back strip uh, by, I believe, 33 inches. And those instructions are included, of course. And then for whatever's going to be in the front, we thought this uh, white uh, kind of plaid floral was super cute. You'll trim your strips down to two inches and they'll be cut to 33 inches long. And that's what will be wrapped around kind of that cotton webbing I talked about before. So let's put that one aside for now. And let's just talk about the, the batting strips. Remember that part that I, I cut apart or kind of put aside later? That's where you'll just cut those strips out exactly on their footprint as you would expect. And I've got my 33 inch strip here. 
So let me put my batting strip up here. One of the first steps that they have you do after you cut your strips to 33 inches is they want you to fold the ends in by half an inch. And I've always struggled with knowing how do I know what a half inch is visually? Well, this is where the hot ruler comes into play. I love that these measurements are everything from an eighth to a quarter to a half, all the way up to two and a half. So I can just understand where my half inch line is and I can roll my fabric over and say, oh, you know, I'm over my line and I just kind of slide that over until my fabric meets that line. And this ruler will tolerate heat. It does not warp. You know, I've tried to use other types of measuring, uh, even rulers, but of course they're plastic and I can't leave the ruler there or the iron's going to damage that. This hot ruler just does not break down under heat. And that way I can get a precise measurement every single time. So let's go ahead and do the other end. It just has this neat texture and grip about it that it's just a really versatile tool that you can be precise. And I want to be precise. All right, so I went ahead and did the other strap ahead of time. So that one's also already tucked in the half inch. You would do that on both the front and the back of both of those strips. Let's put our hot ruler aside. And this is where the batting strip will be placed on the wrong side of the two and a half inch wide uh, strap. And notice it doesn't come all the way to the ends and that's good. You want to be able to have a little bit of space where there's none of the batting or none of the strapping. So there's less to sew through. So don't be concerned that this batting strip is short of that. It's supposed to be. We just want to position that where it's positioned evenly so that I have the equal amounts on either end. Once I'm here, this is where I'm, I recommend a really cool product called Wonder Tape. Now this is of course optional. This is not part of the kit. If you don't want to use Wonder Tape, you would simply press this over, press like this, and you would press the other side in toward the middle, and you're just going to basically be kind of covering up your batting strip with the fabric. So that's all meeting toward the middle. I found that to be challenging for it to kind of stay there. Even when I would, here, let me just demonstrate this. So you, see, you can see why we were reaching for this Wonder Tape as we were making the sample bag. We were just, we had our hands full trying to keep that pressed. And as I kind of moved my way down, you know, it, it kind of start backing off again, no matter how much I seem to, to steam it. And of course, that's just down one side, and then we have to come back with the other side and steam that. And it, it just was not holding together quite the way I had hoped. So I said, what do we have in the sewing room that's gonna make this just easier? It's like a third pair of, it's like a third hand almost, just to help me hold something down. And it's a product that's actually been out a long time but that I don't use very often, but it came into play so beautifully. It's called Wonder Tape. It's a double-sided washable tape. It's, it's meant to hold something there temporarily while you sew something down. It's completely wa water soluble and will disappear with your first washing. So I'm just going to lay this down all the way, pressing down and then just trim. I grab my pair of scissors here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side because I have both sides that need to be come up and be secured. One roll will make one bag, plus you have a little bit left over. So if you'll be making multiple bags and you like the Wonder Tape, um, I think you'll love it. You'll be sure to pick up one roll of Wonder Tape per bag. And I think probably about, after about three bags, you'll have enough left over that you could do potentially a fourth bag. So I've laid, laid that down. 
Now there's a piece I'm going to, with. It, it, there's a, obviously a thing I need to remove here. I just want to make sure I'm good and centered. My goal is to get both pieces coming to the center equally. So I'm just going to peel this back. And you'll, it's a little tough to get it going. Tape can be like that. But once you get it going, it'll peel all the way down. Here we go. Just take one side off at a time, though. I guess I didn't need to line that up because it's going to move a little bit. Now I'll line it up again. Okay. Once you're satisfied, it's where you want it to be. I'm just going to, with my fingers, roll this over. If you felt inclined to pre-crease it, again, using your um, hot ruler, that's another great idea. You could kind of pre-crease it. See how that just, it just holds it down, which I love. I don't want things moving around. Now we'll do the same on the other side. Turn that around, a little easier for me on this side. Okay, and then it's easier for me to fold down toward myself. So let's leave that half inch in there, fold that over. All the way down. And you can go back and iron things, too, for even more reinforcement. I find that when you heat this uh, kind of tape up, it kind of gets even stickier. Oh, let's get that in there. And if it didn't fold over exactly, just undo it and do it again. There we go. All the way down. Now it's much more secure and I can, I don't, I don't have pins happening. Now we'll repeat the process the same exact process is with this, with the strapping, the same thing. And just to save us time, I'll describe what I'm doing. Because um, you've already seen how the Wonder Tape works. I would just run the Wonder Tape right down the middle, peel it away, bring this side over, put the Wonder Tape on top, and bring it over again. That's all that you need to do. Once that's done, do you see how this now will be like this? And this is like this. So the wrong side up, wrong side down, and you'll simply place them together like this. And then you're sewing. You see that? Just on the inside of that to attach that. So that's how you'll create your straps. Now I want to take you right away to how to get these onto the bag because that's another thing by itself. The pattern has you taking a ruler and measuring inside, we're on the back side of the pattern now, five and a half inches to the inside. So let's go ahead and measure that. I think five, five inches, excuse me, to the inside. And let's mark that. I'll be using my friction pen with a nice strong line. 
And I'll be doing that on both sides of the bag. There we go, five inches right there. Notice how the pattern has you with your straps to the inside. So looking at the bag like this, you will start with measuring down. Now, I want to point this out. I wish, you, I wish you could feel this, actually. Remember how the batting didn't come all the way to the end and I said, that's good? That's the gap. That's the place when you can feel it in there. That's where you will measure down and actually sew across, and we'll go ahead and do that together. And then the strap will lay back on top of itself and go back up. And that, that distance, I kind of, that's why I want to give you the liberty of choosing that distance. That's why you want to have the strap inside be the same distance from the end as it is from this end. And right now that feels about, it's about an inch down. So wherever that place is, it looks like it's about from the very, very top. Oh, about an inch, maybe inch and a quarter. Whatever you do, just be consistent about it. All right, and I'm going to, I'm on the inside of my line here. I can feel this place right here, and I can mark it on my bag. I can even mark it on my strap. So I kind of know where I'm going to begin and I'm going to end. And we're going to take that. I'm just going to pin that so that doesn't move when I go from here to the sewing machine. And we're just going to go from here to here. Then we will bring our strap up. So let's go over to the sewing machine. I will take this plate off again so that we can just have that going around the arm of the machine. So I definitely want to reinforce these stitches. You might even want to shorten your stitch length just a little bit and definitely back stitch there. Now you can just, you don't even really have to go anywhere. You can just bring the strap up and we're just going to sew across here and right across the top here. So let's go do that now. The other place I want to do that is right here. Now I'm going across a lot of bulk. If you have any difficulty with this, you might want to get this good and hot and steamed out, which tends to relax the fabric. It makes it a little easier for the machine to go through, but let's give it a try. If we don't have any problems, I'm just going to go. If we do, I'll stop and go and I'll iron that out. Okay. That just shows us how strong our Bernina really is. It just goes. So I've got one, uh, one sewn down. Now to do the other one, I've done <laughs> true confessions again, where I went to sew the next strap down or the next side and I got a twist. So step one would be just confirm you don't have a twist in that. There's not a loop that you hadn't expected. Um, and again, making sure you are on the inside of that line. I almost lined up on the outside of that line. I always like to just realign. Once I'm sure I'm in the right spot, then go ahead and flip it. Remember we measured down, I think it was like an inch, inch and a quarter, wherever that space is. Go ahead and mark again, pin, take it back to the sewing machine with your straight stitch, flip it up, again across the bottom and the top, and you'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the bag, of course, with your other strap. So it is such a versatile tote, you know, uh, shopping, the gym. 
I'm always bringing projects from, from home back to shabby fabric. So I find bags like this super versatile and of course they make a great gift. Um, thank you for giving me a, a good part of your day to show you how to make this bag. Of course, we have new projects coming out all the time. I hope you subscribe. That way you can be the first to see what we're doing here at Shabby Fabrics. So I'll see you next time.